is the key to the building of our aura of love. Sacred sexuality builds and refines our aura. Our aura becomes love, the aura of love, and love is medicine. With our auric energy, miracles flow through us and from us. We become transmitters of transformative power for the good. We become healers. We become lovers. We become gods and goddesses. The practice of sacred sexuality, known by the ancients as alchemy, sacred sexual alchemy, harnesses the solar atomic energy, which is used to create and develop our aura of love. Sex is creative. Sex is sacred. Sex is an extension of the universal life force. Sex is an expression of God. It is through the understanding of sex that we will come to comprehend God fully. God as the creative life force, as creativity, as the act of creation itself. God creates life. God is our creative energy. Creative energy is our sexual energy. Sexual energy creates life. Life is sexual, creative energy. Our sexual energy creates. God creates and has made us in that same image. God is within our sexual energy. Our sexual energy is an extension of God energy. As an extension of God, sexual energy does not belong to this third dimension. Sexual energy belongs to the fourth dimension. It belongs to the kingdom of the gods. It is an energy of creation. This energy of creation is potent. It is a powerful force. Its force will lead us into heaven or deliver us into hell. Sex creates pleasure, connection, intimacy, healing, inspiration, children, joy. Sex allows for the ascent into an awakened state of bliss, into heaven. Sex also creates desire, obsession, gluttony, sex addictions of all kinds, and the demise of the human psyche. The demise of the human psyche is the descent into suffering, into hell. It is our free will to choose how to use our creative life force, our sexuality, our sex. As a disciple of light, when we choose to wield this powerful sexual force for awakening, for ascension, for love, we choose to master the sexual forces. When we master the sexual forces, they no longer master us. The mastery of our sexual life force, the mastery of our creative energy, the mastery of sacred sexual alchemy is the secret key to building our aura of love. To build an aura of love is to harness the solar atomic energy. To harness the solar atomic energy is to harness the force of God to harness the force of God and allow it to expand within us, to move through us, is to harness the power of creation. With the power of creation, we can create powerful love. And love is medicine. Let us master our sacred sexual energy. Build a powerful aura of love and be the medicine.
Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, Jesus and Tim and Yvonne, the first to arrive today. Um, where are you coming in from? Um, I am in Monona, Wisconsin, which is uh, sort of enveloped in Madison, Wisconsin. Hey, Tim, the um, the uh, capital of Wisconsin. I'm about two hours north of Chicago. And uh, in the chat, just let me know where you're coming in from. San Diego. Hey, Seuss, welcome. Canada from Yvonne. Beautiful. And uh, Tim, remind me, I know that you have shared in the past and I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Ah, the Netherlands. Excellent. Wow. Whoa. I'm not sure what time it is over there, but it is not the same time as it is here. That I know. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, welcome. I am about to share with you a topic that I love, I am passionate about, of all the things that I get to share about in the world and teach. This is probably uh, my favorite. I get really excited, really turned on. I think it is a powerful, potent topic. And I do believe, as I wrote in the video, that it is the secret key to building our aura of love, which is uh, building our vital life force for creativity, for relationship, for um total health on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So um, this is a topic that is just dear to my soul. And uh, I'm excited to share it with you. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being here so that I can share it with you. Um, today, uh, I uh, love the location you're in. Thank you, Tim. This is my this is my yurt. There's this beautiful sky, uh, like skylight right above me. <laughs> So this is where I work and I see my clients and I teach classes and hold ceremony. It's a beautiful space. Thank you, Tim. Come sometime and visit. Um, so <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to ask you today to um, play with me full on. I'm going to have questions for you. I'm going to have exercises and experiences for you. I'd like you to move through this experience so that you can uh, really get a, a deep sense of what I'm offering. So more than just transmitting information to you, of course, I want to transmit an experience that you can take along with you into your life uh, day by day, moment by moment. Um, so if you're willing to play full on with me today, uh, these are a few things that I would love for you to do. First, give me a yes or a write on in the chat. Um, if you can, Please put your camera on so I can see you and I can interact with you. It's so great to see Tim and be able to have some real live moment with him. Thank you, Yvonne. Super great. Hey, Seuss, if you can, um, then uh, I'm going to ask you to open your heart and open your mind and be super receptive. Some of these concepts you've heard before, some of them may be new to you, some may go over your head, some you may be practicing every single day already in your life. Um, but just be open and see how it resonates with you, get a feel for it. And then at the very end, uh, as I always do, there'll be time for question and answer. And I would love for you to take a deeper dive uh, with me and ask any questions that might pertain to your own personal practice or your life or anything you experience today. So um, I would also love to know, um, no worries, Jesus, uh, if you're at work, thank you for being here and listening in. Um, are you, uh, and you can reply in the chat, are you in a committed monogamous relationship? Yes or no? And if no, would you like to be? Given that this month in life book is about love relationship, and uh, I'm talking about sacred sexual alchemy, then uh, it's just fun for me to know uh, where you land in the realm of relationships. So Yvonne, yes, you are in a relationship. Um, beautiful. No, and yes, and he would like to be beautiful. Well, this practice definitely uh, prepares the energetic body to invite in this um, sacred, uh, potent love that's possible for all of us. So, hey, Seuss, yes or no, you're in you're in the right place if you if you want that kind of relationship. And then another few questions: Do you know what Qi Kong is? Have you heard of Qi Kong? Have you practiced Qi Kong? I just want to get a sense of where to begin. No, hey, Seuss says no Qi Kong. Good to know. Anyone else? 
Uh, not right now. From the traditional sense, Tim says, I do have an intimate relationship with someone beautiful. Okay, great. A uh, little tiny bit, Yvonne, of the Qigong. Okay, good. And then uh, my last question for the moment, um, have you heard of white tantra, sacred sexual alchemy, kundalini yoga, the, the Kama Sutra, those kinds of uh, ancient practices that all revolve around sacred sexuality? Tim says a little bit. Okay, good. Uh, a little, Jesus. All right, great. So good. This will be super fun. Uh, I get to introduce you to a lot of concepts. We only have 90 minutes. I have weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of material. Uh, I offer a course called The Way of Qigong for Couples, and it's a 12-week course. So there is, and that's just a beginning. And then I have an annual program that goes on beyond that. So I'm going to give you what I can today, but there is so much, especially for those of you who are new uh, to all of this. So uh, let's dive in. I'm just going to share my screen. I've prepared... Um, a few slides. Let's see. I'm going to do a few things. Here we go. Okay. So here we are. Um, let me know in the chat because sometimes when I flip my slides to... Um, the slideshow itself, it disappears. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, Tim says yes. Okay, beautiful. All right, so Pure Fire, Bold Love, The Way of Qigong for Couples. This is where we are today. And um, we are getting into uh, midway. We're in June of 2024. As life bookers, we're halfway through our year of vision building and goal um, so again, yes or no, is this your year to, first of all, embody your sexual energy in healthy and fulfilling ways? Is that something that you want for yourself and your relationship in 2024? Simple yes or no. Yep. Thumbs up. Uh, do you want to recognize the energetic power that can flow between you and your lover? The energetic power that can flow between you and your lover. Do you recognize that already would also be another great question for you. Uh, and then lastly, uh, do you want to infuse your romantic relationship with a sacred practice that emboldens your love? And what does that mean to embolden your love? We're going to dive more deeply into that. Uh, but essentially, we can look at it uh, very in its most simplest sense. Is your relationship growing? expanding, evolving, becoming more vibrant in its love and its light and its legacy? Or is it uh, stagnant? Is it stale? Is it transactional? Is it just kind of moving along day by day? Is it a disintegrating? Is it moving toward uh, divorce or breakup? So energy uh, is always in motion. We know this is a law of energy. It's always in motion. We also know that energy begets energy. So our relationship is energy. We're going to be talking about that a lot today. And so our relationship itself is always in motion, which means like us, like our physical, mental, emotional, and energetic health, we are either evolving and expanding and growing, or we're de-evolving or disintegrating. Um and so what I want to share with you today is ideas, concepts, and practices that will help embolden your love, meaning uh, allow you to step into one another and out into the world in a way that says we are growing, we're full on, we're expanding, we're experiencing our love at its absolute fullest, and we're deepening our connection, which means our trust, our intimacy, our vulnerability, moment by moment, day by day. Uh, so I'm seeing lots of whys, lots of yeses, uh, needs some work. Uh, Yvonne, every relationship needs some work, even the best and greatest of relationships. Uh, we hear John and Missy talk about it often. They have a phenomenal relationship and, uh, yet they work at it every single day. And so, um, we have that opportunity, opportunity to find practices that help us to work on a relationship uh, in ways that are playful, that are fun, um, that are spiritual, and that also help us grow personally, as well as part of the coupleship. Uh, so all of that is available um, 
today. Let's see, get here. Uh, so just a little bit about me. Some of you have been with me a few times, but in the context of tonight uh, or today, depending on where you are, what I want to share, um, 24 years ago, I first met um, Inca Chasky, spiritual messenger Willaru Huayta. He's a Quechua elder uh, from Peru. And I traveled, I journaled, journeyed to Peru after a very deep calling to go there. And I spent four days and four nights on the Inca Trail in Vision Quest, arriving in Machu Picchu, and I found uh, myself uh, coming back home in a way that I I, I didn't know uh, Machu Picchu at that time. Uh, and as soon as I arrived, I just wept uh, a deep, deep uh, remembering of the energy of this place. And Willaru uh, has been my teacher and my elder and my papa and a mentor and a dear friend. Uh, since, and he has blessed me, uh, in fact, to write his teachings into a book form, which doesn't exist uh, yet and has been asked for for many decades. So I feel very honored to do that. Uh, Willaroo gave me uh, the three keys or the three steps to the self-realization, which is the essence or the synthesis that can be found in all spiritual traditions, all religions throughout time and across cultures. And you've heard me talk about those in the past if you've been with me. Today, we're gonna dive into the second of the three steps. Earlier, we uh, dove into the first step, which is about um, uh, dissolving the negative aspects of our ego, of our energy, of our personality, those things that aren't working for our highest good within. They might be things like anger or impatience or greed or envy or laziness um, uh, in context of today, certainly various forms of lust or various forms of being so devital devitalized that your sexual energy isn't healthy and expressing itself at all. So in the first step, we're really working on the self. In the second step, we begin to work with our beloved, with our sacred sexual partner. Uh, that one in which we are in, in, in an intimate, committed, and um, monogamous relationship with. Other forms of expression, polyamory, et cetera, all have their place. It's just not what we're going to dive into today. All forms of sacred sexual expression with consent and clarity and vision um, are blessed. Today, we're going to talk about a very specific form of um, the sacred sexual alchemy, which uh, is defined by uh, a monogamous committed relationship. So that's a little context. Uh, and then uh, about 15, 16 years ago, uh, I also came into connection with a beautiful teacher, Sifu Pragata Blaze, uh, who became my Qigong teacher and also friend and also blessed me to uh, carry on that tradition of the 18 Lohan hands uh, and teach it and share it. Um, he is now in, in Portugal, but he spent 20 years in the ashram of Osho in India. And prior to that, he's French. He's from France. His story is just epic on so many levels. He's an incredible being to know, and I've been blessed to learn uh, from him. Uh, over time, these two paths with both Willaru and Pragata and all that they've shared with me have infused in such a way that I can barely separate them any longer. And they really color the work that I do uh, in my own personal life and with my family and with my uh, clients and my students. Uh, so uh, just to give you a little background where these teachings are coming from, they're ancient. Qigong is an ancient practice. I'll talk more about what Qigong is soon. Um, and the three keys uh, are ancient esoteric wisdom. Like I said, that has been carried through all spiritual traditions through time. Uh, this combination creates a potent pathway to divine relationship, to sacred sexuality, and to setting the course of your relationship toward evolution, toward ascension, toward awakening and building your aura of love, which... Uh, our aura of love is medicine. We know uh, from the story of Jesus that just to come within his fear of in influence in the Bible, it says to touch the hem of the garment. That means to come within the range of his aura was to be healed. And this is what was known as miracles at the time. But his vital life force 
was so potent, so pure, so powerful that you could just come near him and you would be immediately healed. And this is what we can build. Uh, this great teacher, Jesus also said, you will do even greater things than I. So he's encouraging us to build our own vital life force in the way that he did, and then do even more. Uh, so, so this is our call and all of the ancient traditions such as white tantra and alchemy and kundalini yoga are all tapping into the fact that all things are our energy. Nikola Tesla said, uh, energy, frequency, vibration, all things. Uh, which means our sexual energy, uh, our sex, our connection. Uh, no worry, Jesus, come back as soon as you can. Um, it means that they're all, they all are energy. They're not only based in energy, they are energy. And relationships are an exchange of energy. So relationships themselves are energy, whether that's with a coworker or a parent or a pet or a tree uh, or yourself. All relationships are an exchange of energy in the form of words exchanged, thoughts exchanged, touch exchanged, um, vision and planning exchanged, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when we come to understand that a relationship is energy, then we begin to look at what is the energy that I am bringing to the relationship? Is it grounded? Is it pure? Is it lit up? Is it positive? Is it flowing with strength and power? Uh, or am I bringing an energy that's tired, that's fatigued, that's resentful, that's uh, ornery? Uh, some of those are emotions. Some of those are thoughts, which are also energy. Thoughts are energy. Emotions are energy. Uh, and so as we build the energy of our relationship, we must first be building our relationship with self. And our relationship with others is an extension of our relationship with self. Um, and Tim was saying, so funny as an electrical engineer, it's so funny to connect this storyline to my engineering education. Indeed. And I would love to hear more about that. You know, the four pillars, my business is called Four Pillars for Health. The four pillars are science, and I consider engineering science, mystery, and these are the esoteric te uh, teachings. Uh, some of them are so mysterious, we'll never comprehend them in our own mind. Um, also philosophy and art. And when these four pillars come together, science, philosophy, art, and the great mystery, when they integrate, humanity will take another step in its evolution. Right now, we are compartmentalizing those aspects. We must bring them together and then wow, what the scientists will understand and what the mystics will be able to ground into and what the artists will create. It, it's just going to explode in such beautiful ways. So so it's a coming together that that um, that we're calling for. And Vaughn was saying, that's why some people exhaust us and some energize us. That is exactly right. Um, and and our, our intimate, our loving relationship is no different. Sometimes our lover will exhaust us, frankly, and sometimes they'll exhilarate us. But also sometimes we'll exhaust our lover, right? And sometimes we will exhilarate them. And uh, what I want to remind you of today is that we can master our own energy and be in that place where we are continuously, consistently the medicine that we bring to our own lover, to our own relationship. Because um, the, the sacred vow of commitment you could call it marriage or domestic partnership or or uh, just a knowing that that this is your commitment to this person um, for a lifetime, um, that that vow has always been a sacrament or a sacred vow. And why was it a sacred vow? Because the vow is to be the support for the self-realization of your partner as they are the support for your self-realization. So there's only so far I can take my awakening in this lifetime as a single practitioner, as a solo, single human. We all know once we get with a lover, with a partner, with a mate, all those things we've worked on and we think we're really good and we're pure, start getting triggered. 
somehow our partner can do this or do that, or they sit a particular way, or they say a certain thing, or they don't show up to dinner on time. All these things start to trigger us. And pretty soon we're outside of our center. We're off balance. We're out of harmony with ourself, not only with our lover. So we must take that second step, which is to come into intimate partnership. If we want to continue to evolve on our spiritual path, if we want to continue to purify our vehicles, learn about ourselves, know ourselves, uh, in, uh, in powerful ways. Um, Tim, what is the difference between white Tantra and normal Tantra? There are three aspects of Tantra. Um, I write about them in, in the book that's coming out. You can reserve that copy, but let me give you just a very brief, cause it's a, it's a great question. Um, normal Tantra or gray Tantra, as it's, uh, often referred to, is uh, a sexual uh, intimate connection that is based in love uh, and care and support, beautiful, uh, the propagation of our species, children, joy, beautiful sensuality, uh, pleasure, all of this is inherent in normal Tantra. And we can definitely vitalize uh, through that path. Before I get to white Tantra, what is black Tantra or dark Tantra? Tantra is the use of our sacred sexuality uh, in such a way that um, controls or um, harms self or other that manipulates. Um, we've all heard stories. Perhaps we've had our own experiences of being manipulated uh, by sex, uh, by a partner or a stranger even. Um, it's used uh, for selfish purposes purely. Uh, and even if those selfish purposes are for pleasure, it is not used to be present and uplift the partner. It's used primarily for the self and then can also move into some very dark, dark places. White Tantra is a very high form of using our sexuality to transmute our energy into the highest attainment of self-realization. And so what that looks like is as, as our sexual energies are aroused, we can either lift them up our spine and nourish our mind and our brain and our heart with those energies, or we can remain in pleasure, which often uh, results uh, in orgasm, which releases that energy out of the body. In white Tantra, we get to that moment just before orgasm, full pleasure, full ecstasy, but just before the full release, and we begin to reverse that energy and use it as medicine to regenerate the body back through the, the physical, mental, emotional, and energetic bodies. So white Tantra is not necessarily uh, a practice for everyone, but if one is willing to experiment a little bit, you will find that the power um, within that orgasm, like we can see a very simple example. Often after orgasm, we just fall asleep or you know, we fall into a deep state of relaxation, right? It's because our, our energy has been spent, if you will. After if an orgasm has been transmuted and not released and lifted back up the spine, two things are going to happen. One, you're going to feel a tremendous amount of vitalized energy. You're going to A, want to either continue with the tantric practice or you're going to want to get up. John was talking about it a few months ago in one of uh, one of their um, gatherings that they do on Wednesday. Um, this retention you can use to... Um, vitalize your artwork or put into your work or creating your life vision or gardening, or it, it gives energy because you've retained that energy rather than release the energy. So it becomes a way to um, use that medicine or that elixir of long life, that, that the sexual fluid to heal the body, mind, and emotions, and then begin to, uh, to evolve them or amplify them. Uh, so that is the difference between those three forms of Tantra uh, and sacred sexual alchemy. Those would be the same. Uh, they could, they could be called normal sexuality, 
infrasexuality or inferior dark sexuality or suprasexuality. Um, and uh, in, I think I have it here. It might be the next slide. Yes. The road to genius consists of the development control uh, and proper use of sex, love, and romance. This is Napoleon Hill. He wrote his book, Think and Grow Rich, all the way back in, I think, 1920, chapter 11. Check it out. He talks about all that I'm sharing today. Um, and so the control of our sexual energy uh, can be moved into uh, that which um, just really emboldens not only our love, but empowers our entire life in any way that we choose to direct it. So again, none of what I'm sharing today has a, a, a moral basis or a religious basis. This is just simply ancient wisdom that's been known throughout time. And we are each allowed free will to choose what path or what combination of paths we would like to um, take. My teacher, Willaroo, when he talks about the second step, especially to those who've not learned about it before, says, take it as information only. <laughs> So, so just take it in, you know, and let it, let it move in you. I'm a dancer. I like to say, you know, dance with it a little bit and just see how it lands. Um, so some of these things I've talked about, all things are energy, frequency, and vibration. Relationships are energy. Sex, love, and romance are all active manifestations of energy. Um, if we want to, if we want to uh, renew our loving sexual romantic relationship with our partner, go to the energy. Look to the energy. What, what is the energy source uh, that your relationship is pulling from right now in whatever state it's in right now? And what energy source could you draw from to infuse your relationship with really lit up um, frequency and vibration? We can master ourselves and our relationships through the conscious comprehension of our energy, our key, and the mindful use of it. So what is Qi Kong? Qi is the energy. Kong is we could say is the art of energy or learning how to master our energy. So Qi Kong, uh, through thousands of years, there are hundreds of different forms and schools of Qi Kong, but they were all created to begin to become aware that we are energy, to become of the aware of how our energy is moving through us and how it's expressing itself so that we can then begin to master that energy and direct it in ways that we choose. If we don't master our energy and have choice, then energy masters us and we no longer have choice. And we can see that in the world where um, folks are identified with the pain and suffering of the world and they become uh, full of pain and full of suffering and depressed. Uh, and that is because the energy of the world is mastering them. They're identifying with that energy outside of their control. But the energy that is within our control, our own universal life force inherent within us, if we can vitalize that, master that, and share that energy, then we can be of service to the world of suffering, to our lover, to our children, to um to all of our relationships, plant, animal, human, at war, not at war. And so this is the call, in my opinion, of a spiritual path, is to develop our own inner energy, master it so that we can show up to the world, not only in a sacred way, but in a powerful way of service or stewardship or uh, purpose, living our gifts fully. And as I'll say many times, that begins with the gift of self, and then the gift that we give to our beloved, our sacred partner, and then the gift we give to the world, which is the third step of the three when I talk about the three steps. Uh, so that's Qigong. It includes awareness and breath and actual physical forms that are very simple that tune us into the fact that um, our thought creates a manifestation. So if I'm going to do a form that moves my arms forward, for instance, the thought in my mind is move arms forward. 
but something happens between the thought and the arms moving forward. And what's in that space is energy. So if I have the thought, which is energy, but then I follow that energetic impulse and I let my physical body follow the energy rather than go arms out, arms in. If I can begin to feel and follow the energy, I've just tapped in to a deeper source. And when we're with a lover, rather than, you know, pouncing on them and let's go, if we follow a particular sensual energy that's inherent in all life, what will begin to arise out of that uh, moment of communion with our partner, which will be, will be much more sensitive, much more vitalized, much more precious, much more intimate. And in relationship, I hear over and over and over from my couples that they want a deeper intimacy or a deeper connection, or they, they want to feel something more. They know there's more, but they don't know how to attain it. And, um, you know, sex making love can become like all things, um, just sort of, you know, normalized or neutralized. You do it, it feels great, but it's not really taking you anywhere. You want to feel more. You're not feeling what you felt when you first got together as a couple because the biology and the hormones and the newness and all of the excitement is no longer there. We've passed through the honeymoon stage or, you know, there's that phase where the biology and the hormones just settle down. We've been together for a while, but we can cultivate that newness, that energy, that vitality moment by moment, day by day for years and decades and a lifetime. If we learn to drop into the exchange of energy with our partner, not just the physical touch, not just the aroma, the smells, the taste, but the energy that's moving between us in lovemaking. Um, so when we direct that pure and potent force of our sexual energy, our inner fire to uplift, and this is really important to today's work to uplift and evolve our life and the life of our beloved. That's the vow. That's the sacred vow. Our relationship will transform from ordinary to extraordinary. And I know that all of us who are at least part of life book are definitely on that path, that conscious path from ordinary to extraordinary. Uh, so one of the pieces I've given in previous months is how do we purify our energy? So you can go back uh, and learn more about that in previous. Today, we're going to just talk about that sexual energy and assume that we're already pure or that we're at least in the process of purification, which is, of course, always ongoing and for a lifetime. Uh, as sexual energy becomes a sacred conduit through which healing, strength, clarity, and beauty can flow, our love is uh, full of power and purpose, and powerful and pur purposeful love is medicine. So our sexual energy, when worked with our partner in a sacred way, will heal us, will heal them, will heal the world. And uh, this is why I get so excited about sharing this uh, on this topic. Uh, all right. Lovers have known sometimes what saints have not known. I love that uh, part of a poem from Rajneesh. Lovers have known sometimes what saints have not known. It is in that exchange of sexual energy, of having sex, of lovemaking, that we can begin to amplify light. So when I was answering Tim's question about Tantra, in gray Tantra, we're making love. It's beautiful. In white Tantra, we take, we level that up and we're not only making love, but we're making light. We're building our aura of love. And um, we, we know the aura. We, seen it, we have seen it depicted in pictures, ancient pictures of saints and, and the, the great enlightened ones, the teachers, the Buddha, Jesus, Krishna. We see it. We feel it uh, like Yvonne expressed earlier. We get, we get around some people and they just they, they revitalize us just by being in their presence. Their aura is lit up. Some people can see aura. They can see the colors of aura. Some feel the aura. Some sense the aura. All different forms of clairvoyance, clairsentience, uh, even clairaudience. I have a dear friend who can hear 
his chakras spinning. And so he knows by the sound vibration uh, what needs alignment within his own energetic system. Um, so uh, what, what saints have known, uh, and of course this is a generalization, but uh, is this very sacred, intimate relationship with God, with self. Fundamental, absolutely. What lovers know, what sacred lovers know, is not only that relationship with self and God, but whatever name uh, you name God, could be energy, could be Allah, could be Mother Earth, nature, uh, creation, what, whatever name you name God. What lovers know is how to use the, the force of God through them, through their body, through their sexuality, through their emotions, through their energy, and create from that place. Um, and so through the mastery of sex and sexuality, we can come into contact and connection and communion with the life force that, in my opinion, is the fundamental creative energy that we as humans have access to. Because sex creates new life, we know through children, we know that it is the energy that gives us our closest connection to God, or some may say that shows us that in fact, we are in the likeness of God itself. Um, so this creative sexual energy is powerful and potent. And from it, not only do we create children, but like I've said, we can create art and homes and, you know, on and on and on this creative universal life force that flows through us. So I've talked about the three steps uh, to self-realization, which has to do with the mastery of self. Today, we're talking about the second step, the sacred sexual alchemy. And uh, also today, we're talking about Qigong, which is the mastery of energy and relationships. Uh, and the idea of the way of Qigong for couples if we just break that down a little bit, the way, the way implies a lifestyle. It implies a conscious choice. What is this sacred, loving relationship, committed, lifelong, perhaps, relationship? What is that? What am I dedicating that relationship to? What is the way of our relationship? What is the legacy ultimately that we want to leave for children or the world or generations to come, a legacy of love or a legacy of, of arguments and anger or uh, even toxic um, abuse or violence. What, what is the way of your relationship? Do you know what that is? Have you defined that? The way of Qigong simply means the way of energy in your relationship and the mastery of that energy within your relationship so that the energy of your relationship is pure, it's potent, it's vital, it's full of pleasure and play and joy and power and medicine. Uh, and then, of course, for couples, it's obvious um, this particular path is for couples, like I've said, who uh, who are committed to one another. Because let, and let, let me let me explain why. Because a coupleship is energy. And in lovemaking, we exchange energy. And in that exchange of energy, we become also the energy that our partner is. This is the, this is the power of penetration, if you will. When we have sexual relations with others outside of our primary relationship, and we exchange energy with those other partners, we become also their energy and the energy of all whom they interact with. And we bring that energy back into our primary relationship. And that can create levels of complication that would be very hard to name or identify or understand why are we having this challenge? What is this difficulty? It may not have so much to do with either one of you. It may have to do with an energy that is moving through one of you that's been brought in from the outside. So again, this is not necessarily for everyone, but for those who want to evolve within a committed monogamous relationship, it's important to understand why that monogamy is so powerful. Uh, there's a lot of 
anti-monogamy out there. It doesn't work. It fails. We're not designed to do that. Biologically, a lot of that is true. But when we're on a spiritual path, we're we're choosing to ascend our human nature and move into the kingdom of gods or a godlike or an angelic nature, a higher vibration or a more pure light or a lit up vitality by whatever name you want to call that. So I just wanted to clarify why there are other reasons, but that is really part of the essence of why um, the monogamy is a choice that you could make and why you might make that choice. All right. Um, so here's a question. Uh, do you have a personal spiritual practice? And if so, uh, what is it? Uh, Yvonne, is it the same for men and women? Yvonne, tell me what, darling, is what the same for men and women? I'm assuming orgasm, maybe? I was talking about that a little while ago. When you were talking about um, holding on to the orgasm and then releasing it back to the brain. Cause John, I think had said something that it didn't matter for Missy, but it mattered for him, but I didn't fully know. He did say that. And I would, um, lovingly and wholeheartedly disagree. <laughs> okay. Cause I, cause something about me questioned that because I didn't know if that was an ego thing on his part or, you know, yeah. like, yeah. I don't know, John, I have no judgment, but what I know from my own practice and from my teacher and from the lineage of these, the ancient teachings in this practice is it is exactly the same for the priest and the priestess or the God and the goddess or the man and the woman, the masculine and the feminine. Absolutely. Because our sexual energy, when we release it, um, we release it. We can't transmute it. Now we can, we can bring ourselves, um, and again, this is a generalization more often or more quickly to multiple orgasm. Um, however, it's, it's still a depletion rather than a regeneration. So as women, yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, and it does sometimes in relationship that can also be very difficult for the masculine. And it is a, it is an ego of lust or pride um, or even gluttony that they will need to look at and overcome if they are, um, what's the word, um, determined, we'll just use, it's not the word I want, but if they are determined that we orgasm as women under their beautiful lovemaking artistry, um, it, it's it's a it's a deep and important conversation, and it's something definitely to look at as a couple. Uh, but for women, we absolutely vitalize our life force when we also restrain and we transmute that sexual energy. Really powerful and super healthy. Um, now, when one isn't fully prepared, it can also be frustrating, and it can create ego. So it's very important to be under the guidance of a, a teacher or support or really in tune with yourself and your partner, because what you don't want to do is um, um, have some kind of rigid, we're never going to orgasm, and then get angry or frustrated, biologically frustrated, uh, when a need for a deep need for release is present. Uh, so it requires to practice the white Tantra consistently uh, as a lifestyle requires more than just your, your sexual sacred relationship. It does require purity in your food, uh, in your well-being, in your exercise, in trauma from your past. All of these are aspects of being able to approach white Tantra in a healthy way where it's going to be super productive rather than create more trauma. Uh, and so I have seen couples who didn't have proper guidance. Um, Kundalini has awakened and, and it can create pain in the sacral area and the body. It can fry your energetic, your chakra system. And it can also get into the level of the brain, the mind and make people crazy. So, um, so Kundalini is something that we take uh, with great, um, uh, um, uh, what's reverence, um, because it is such a potent force. So we, we want to experiment, we want to enjoy, we want to play, but we don't want to take for granted 
uh, anytime we move into a really powerful spiritual practice of any kind, even if that's meditation, you know, don't go on a vision quest. I just put my son up on the hill. He just turned 21 for four days and four nights fasting. And, and, but he was prepared to do that. I wouldn't send just anybody up on the hill for a vision quest unprepared. So similarly with our sexual energy, we don't want to dive into white Tantra or the awakening of Kundalini unprepared. Um, so these are good things to know, but if you want to play with it, you know, and you haven't had the experience before, just don't make it a rigid rule or protocol in your life or the life of your relationship until you are sure that this is something that your body and mind and also your relationship can handle and walk with in a good way. Okay. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, Tim says, sounds like a Tantra practice weekend would be the most effective path. Um, I would also disagree with that. Um, to learn Tantra in a weekend, and again, I've seen this happen many, many times, um, it, it, can, it, it can awaken that Kundalini. And once it's awakened, the weekend is over, and there's no guidance or support in in how to how to transmute and work and move that energy that's now full on, um, you know, as a as a lifetime dancer, but also a Pilates teacher and a yoga teacher and all these things that I've been trained in, you know, I've seen over the many decades, you know, I'm I've been teaching for over forty years, one form of something or another. Um, weekend weekend workshops become a yoga teacher in a weekend become you know sacred sexual kundalini couple in a weekend become a pilates body work massage therapist in a weekend kind of thing this stuff is super super powerful super potent i would say if you did a weekend of tantra i'm not saying don't do that but understand that that is your beginning not your beginning middle and end this is just to get a little bit of you know, information, um, but be very careful. I've got a dear, dear friend who did a Kundalini week weekend. Her Kundalini was awakened and she has been in one form of ill health for probably 17, 18 years. And she has not been able to fully uh, bring her health. Um, and her, and her relationship broke up actually uh, as a result of, of not just that practice, but the, what happened because of the practice, which was her, her health challenges. Um, uh, Tim said, yeah. And the main idea is to do something physical, being present with someone instead of rushing the whole process. Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. And I'm going to give you what I'm going to give you today are very safe. First of all, very safe introductions to be in the presence of that energy with yourself and your lover. Uh, uh, and just have a, have a beginning. And uh, just these practices though, will, will infuse the rest of your lovemaking with your partner in a way that will excite the whole encounter each time. Um, so a lot of this, I think I've talked about already, sacred sexual alchemy is an approach to lovemaking that considers the energy exchanged as medicine for your body, mind, and soul so that your relationship will evolve or ascend. Energy is either expanding or contracting. It's never stagnant. So I've been talking about that. I want to get to the first practice, uh, which is a practice you can do um, if you're a single, if you're in a coupleship, uh, or if you're in a coupleship, but your partner isn't interested in, in practicing the sacred sexual alchemy with you. It's called the alternate breath practice. It's known uh, in other traditions um, as uh, nostril breathing or alternate nostril breathing. It vitalizes the life force. Uh, it vitalizes the chakra system. We have Ida and Pangala. We've got two energies that, that move up our spine, the yin and the yang, the masculine and feminine, uh, the active dynamic, the receptive uh, and restful. And what we want to do in Qigong, the, the, the purpose of Qigong is to bring those polarities within us into balance and then into harmony and then to amplify that harmony within. And that amplified harmony is healing and vitalizing and empowering. So when we work with our alternate breath, 
we're working with several things. We're working with awareness. We're working with meditation. We're working with breath, which is moving the universal life force through us. But we are also harmonizing and balancing our internal yin and yang. And when we come to our lover, we want to come as a balanced, loving presence. Yeah. So it's really good to practice with the self before we come together for a sexual encounter, even if that's a date night or a dinner or a kiss or an embrace. Uh, and in my couples workshop, we work a lot with communication before you have those hard conversations that need to be had, finances or whatnot. Um, take a moment and get the self, get the self energy into beautiful balance and harmony. So this is what I'd like you to do. Close your eyes. And just start to breathe naturally. We're going to settle in um, to, uh, to a very beautiful, gentle practice here together. Opening your mind, opening your heart. And feeling the breath coming in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you exhale and release the breath through the mouth, let go of any tension, any distraction any contraction in the body, the mind, or the heart center. And having released that tension, created space for the energy to flow, on your inhale, allow yourself to be receptive to drawing in the universal life force, the prana that which gives life to the life. Each inhale is a beautiful infusion of not only oxygen that we need for our biological life, but potent universal energy that we need for our mental, emotional, and energetic life. So sense that energy drawing in on the inhale. And now as you exhale, begin to expand as that universal life force itself. Draw in the universe, the energy of the universe. And as you exhale, sense yourself as the universe. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. And then bring your attention, your mental focus to your spine. And sense that there's an energy, subtle as it may be, that moves from the base of the spine, the sacral center, all the way up through each vertebra, up in and through the pineal gland, through the crown of the head, through the crown chakra. And along that spinal column are seven major energy set centers known as chakras. And without going into great detail right now, just know that as you breathe in the universal life force consciously, you're energizing and purifying these seven sacred energy centers. As you exhale, let that energy flow freely. Knowing that there is this energy flowing, both in light and vibration, but also in moisture, we know that there's a synovial fluid that moves through our spine, always in motion. We come to understand that there are two aspects of this spinal energy, the yin and the yang, the masculine and feminine, the active dynamic, and the restful passive, receptive. For the women, to begin the alternate breath, I'd like you to press on your left nostril, keeping your right nostril open. For the gentlemen, it's opposite. Use your thumb to press and close your right nostril, keeping your left nostril open. Then inhale through the appropriate side, and then pause the breath as you close off both nostrils. Release the opposite side for your exhale. And begin again, inhale through the opposite nostril, close it off, Open the original side and exhale. And just continue with that for a moment, alternating the breath with attention to a pause in between the inhale and the exhale. It's during the pause of the breath 
that our energy system is being vitalized. The pause is very important, sacred stillness, emptiness. And then internally in your own mind, you're gonna add a mantra, a powerful mantra that brings Ida and Pingala into full uh, communion with your present moment. And it's simply Tom Sa Ham, Tom Ra Ham. On your first inhale, it's Tom. The pause of the breath is Sa. The exhale, Ham. Pause of the breath. Other side, Tom is the inhale. Pinch it off, Ra is the pause, hum is the exhale. Just continue with that pattern, tam, sa, hum, tam, ra, hum. And then begin to take a deeper inhale on the inhale and a deeper exhale on your exhale. With each inhale, feel that universal life force entering through your crown chakra all the way to the base of your spine. As you pause the breath, that energy begins to lift and rise up the spine. As you exhale and then pause, you are vitalized in either your Ida feminine or Pingala masculine. Take just a few more cycles and then come into a restful, normal breath cycle. And as you rest and breathe naturally, just notice what feels different from when you started, what feels different physically, mentally, emotionally, and energetically. And then open your eyes, come back with me. Just put a few, few thoughts in the chat there. What do you notice changed? Or do you have a question about that practice? Or um, what did you just experience in general? Uh, while you're writing, uh, Yvonne asks, can you do a mix of gray and white Tantra? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and it's the best way to start, really, Yvonne. Um, to go full white Tantra out of the gate uh, would be challenging on a lot of levels possible. Um, but you would definitely also want a lover who is full on with you in that commitment. So uh, a combination is is really, really a beautiful place to start. And in that, I would add for, for everyone, a, a severe caution, never practice Black Tantra. Never practice Black Tantra. In my book, I think I write it three times, never practice Black Tantra, never practice Black Tantra. So that's a conversation for another time. But yes, a mix of gray and white Tantra uh, would be a beautiful way to start. So um, any any thoughts you have to share on, on uh, that, that practice, that alternate breath practice. Some of you may have had it in a yoga class or uh, some other practice, uh, but now you start to uh, comprehend and understand why we alternate. We're activating the internal active dynamic masculine, we're activating the internal receptive passive feminine, and we're bringing them into harmony and balance, uh, which vitalizes our chakra system. So this, this is a practice that you can begin to do um, every day. Start with just a minute or so, doesn't have to be long. You can work your way up uh, to three to 33 minutes 
Or a really beautiful practice that I love is to do seven alternating cycles at dawn and seven alternating cycles at dusk, uh, or even just when you wake up in the morning or right before you go to bed. So you're vitalizing your energy system first thing in the morning, and then you're vitalizing your energy system right before bed as you move into the dream time and the higher dimensions uh, during sleep. Um Michelle says it was lovely to practice it with the group here. Absolutely. Uh, I could not agree more. I love uh, when I work with groups and and uh, the couples workshop is in a group and it, it always brings power when we work uh, in a group. So thank you, Michelle, for that comment. And thanks for being here and welcome, Michelle. Um, all right. So no one has any other thoughts on that. Let's move along. Um. The way of Qigong for couples. So that so that is what we just practiced. The alternate breath would be uh, an essential practice for a uh, for a single. Now we're going to get. I'm going to give you one essential practice um, for a couple. The these are just the beginning. These these two practices I give you today. There's a beginning level, intermediate, advanced level. There's more and more practice and teachings that really fill this out fully. But I only have 90 minutes with you today. So I wanted to give you one simple practice that you can do just so easily right away uh, today. So now the second aspect of today is the way of Qigong for couples. So this work is going to transform your relationship from ordinary to extraordinary. Your relationship with yourself, if you don't have a partner, and or your relationship with your beloved if you do have one. Um, this is going to bring an awareness of, sac of the sacredness of sexuality. You're going to experience the flow of, universe, of the universal life force. This builds a foundation of trust and honesty and courage for great communication in your relationship with your lover, but also with yourself. We're not always honest with ourselves, right? We don't always have a great amount of courage. Uh, and we don't always communicate from a place of authentic tr uh, truth. Um, and we lose trust in ourselves and the world lo loses trust in us. So so what I'm about to give you is going to give you a beautiful foundation for, for those uh, energies of trust, honesty, and courage. Uh, and you're going to learn how to amplify your light. So we've talked earlier about moving from cultivating love to cultivating light uh, or building your light. Uh, body or your aura of love so that you can be the medicine blessing yourself and the world. So this is what we're going to get into next. I think the practice, yes, is now. So uh, I call this the energy circuit. You can do this energy circuit singly also. Um, and you, uh, if you are in a loving relationship, teach this to your beloved and practice it with them. I'm going to give it to you today, whether you're here by yourself or your, your partner is with you either way. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to adapt it from working with the self to working it uh, with your partner. So again, I'm going to have you start by, excuse me, closing your eyes and just breathe in through the nose again for a moment and out through the mouth. And just take a moment to fully relax. And we began to connect already with our energy. So take yourself back immediately into that beautiful energetic connection that you just had with yourself through the alternate breath. And now we're going to more fully recognize the universal life force or the universal energy or the prana that is flowing, streaming to us moment by moment at all times through our crown chakra, into our whole vital, physical, mental, emotional, energetic system. And what I'd like you to do is imagine that universal life force coming in through your chakra and into your heart center. So as you inhale, allow that universal life force, the energy of the gods to come in through you and vitalize the love within your heart center. Just feel that coming in. And it's it's just streaming in continuously. It never ends. It's just a matter of we're not aware of it, but we can tap into this moment, this practice, this connection at any time. So just, it's a matter of receptivity. Receive that power, that potent energy through your crown chakra into your heart center. 
from your heart center, feel that energy, that light, if you will, infused with the love of your heart center, move out into your shoulders, down through your arms and into your hands. And you're gonna allow that energy and that love to create fire, it's called. And it looks like this, it feels like this. The energy is coming from the universe to the heart, out through the arms, into your hands, and you strike with the lightning. And then with the friction, you create fire, you create heat, you create chi in the palms of your hands. So draw that universal life force into your heart, through your arms, and then clap, hold, and rub your hands together vigorously, creating fire, creating chi. One more time, draw the universal life force into the heart, out through the arms, into the hands, and create fire. You'll feel heat, perhaps a tingling sensation, maybe an etheric coolness in your hands. You might often feel in a massage or in, in a sexual coupleship. That's chi. It's beautiful chi. And then take these hands, take your hands, and your left hand is going to be upward facing toward the universe. Palm up. Your right hand, palm down, earth facing. Your left hand is palm up because this, our left side is our feminine side, our receptive side. We're drawing energy in through our left and through our right hand, it's our active dynamic. It's our giving side. It's our masculine side. We're giving energy through the right palm. If you have a partner uh, with you now or when you practice later, they will hover their hands above and below yours. So their right hand will hover above yours. Just imagine that if you're alone. And their left hand will hover below your right hand. And you want to keep a space between the two hands so that energy can flow. This is an energy circuit, an energy connection. And what you'll begin to feel with your beloved is that your heart energy infused with the light of the universe is moving out through your right hand and into their left. They're drawing your loving lit up energy into their heart center, infusing it with their love and their light, moving it out and through their left hand and into your right hand where you receive their love and their light into your heart center. And then it moves through from your heart center out through your right hand and so on and so forth until you get this really powerful energy circuit flowing. Each of you drawing energy from the universe through your crown chakras to your heart and then cycling or circling that energy through your heart, arms, hands, through space and time and into your beloved's hands. Now, if you're alone right now, Bring your hands just in front of your heart center, your right hand hovering above your left. And as a single practitioner, you continue to do the exact same thing. Draw the universal life force in through your crown chakra to your heart center. Then move that light force from your love through your right hand. Send that energy into your left hand and receive it back into your heart center and continue that circuit. And as you draw the universal life force in and you cycle this energy of light and love through your hands and heart, you will begin to amplify your own energy, your own energy of love and light. You will begin to feel the chi between your hands uh, become more powerful, perhaps more hot, more cool, uh, more tingly, um, you will begin to cultivate chi in your hands that can be used for um, healing, can be used for Reiki, can be used for massage, self-massage, can be used for planting in your garden or cooking a meal or embracing a child or healing a wound uh, with a band-aid. Band you, are, you are amplifying this lit up loving energy this is the energy that we call medicine. Now, if you're with your lover or if you're alone, gently let the hands simply touch, very gently. And become fully aware of the sensation of that touch and the energy 
and just gently touching the hands together, receive all the sensations. And notice also the thoughts, the emotions, the energy that's inherent in that physical sensation. And then gently release your hands back, allowing space between the two hands. And then you're gonna draw your hands back into your, the sides of your own body if you're with your partner and just release your hands at your sides into your lap if you're single, if you're alone. And just simply breathe and be present and notice what feels different in your physical body, your emotional body, your energetic body, your mental body. And take a long, deep, cleansing breath. And then just bring your awareness back here to me. So from that moment of the gentle touch, you can imagine two things. One, that you then release and retract into your own energy center the way that we just did and then move on with your day. Or from that gentle touch, that can move into a touching, a caressing, an embracing, a lovemaking, where you have this heightened sensitivity based on the exchange of universal energy that moves into your sexual sacred moment with your beloved. And as you begin to work with that beautiful energy, you will notice uh, your connection deepen, your intimacy will elevate, your vulnerability will open in, in ways that you feel both safe and courageous because you're working with an energy that is it's just so much bigger and, and, and more powerful and more pure than our own personal energy that's wrapped in this personality with all of our life experiences to date. We can release our personality and all of our um, fear, all of our past trauma perhaps, all of our uncertainties about the future. And we can be in the presence of the powerful now moment, simply exchanging energy with our beloved through this phenomenal vehicle that we have that inhabits five senses, taste and touch and smell and sound uh, and sight. And we can see our beloved. We can smell our beloved. We can touch. We can be touched by. We can taste our beloved. And all of these senses will be heightened if we first tap into energy rather than coming to our love making with the mind, with lust, with stress, with neediness, with obligation, um, with a sense of a transactional moment. But if we come in the presence of what I call the sacred, others simply call universal energy or prana or the life force, we can remove all the barriers to pure intimacy. And our relationship will not only be blessed and fortified in that moment, but it will begin to powerfully evolve. So with that, with those thoughts, anything you would like to share uh, in the chat? One question that I have, is there anything you're currently doing to evolve your relationship and amplify your love? Not asking if there's something you're doing to keep your relationship, you know, good as it is, but is there something that you're doing to evolve your relationship? Um, drop that into the chat. Maybe a yes, maybe or no, maybe some detail. And uh, my other question would be, what what is the biggest challenge you have in your relationship? I'm going to have a few moments for question and answer. Um, and I would love to be of any kind of help, support, guidance through the use of these practices and others. Um, 
So those are the first thoughts. Drop those in the chat or anything that you would like to share um, that you felt or learned or sensed or recognized through that energy circuit practice. Uh, as you write, just to recap these two practices, the alternate breath you can practice as a single, the energy circuit you can practice as a couple and or as a single. Um, these are beautiful daily practices. They are preparation not only for your relationship, but for your life. If you practice these things daily, your life will evolve. As life bookers, we're definitely trying to create a life vision, and these practices will absolutely be a complement um, to that journey for sure. They're exquisite practices. They purify and awaken sexu sacred sexuality. Uh, as you saw, they're simple, they're efficient, they're effective. Um, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the ritual around these kinds of practices, the ritual in which you can create a container for your lovemaking. Ritual is a way to um, set an energy that says to one another, I honor you, I serve you, you know, I love you. Yes, love is there. You wouldn't be together if there wasn't love. But is there reverence? Is there respect? Is there an understanding that your beloved is light? That's who they are. All their other personality relationship challenges that your light can commune with their light and vice versa. And if you set your lovemaking, your sacred sexuality in ritual, that might just be simply lighting a candle. That might be a prayer. That might be alternate breath before you begin your caressing. That might be energy circuit. Whatever that would be for you, the power of ritual, uh, I cannot recommend more highly. So that sex is a ceremony. And when, when we are in ceremony, we're in communion with the higher self, with God, uh, with um with the higher powers of self and universe, but also the higher power of our sacred partner. And that will that will change everything about your relationship in magnificent ways. Um, I am seeing Yvonne's hand raised. Yes. Um, I think you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I just had to figure it out. <laughs> Great, I yes. A, I have a question and I think it might be kind of a common thing. And I, I know that's why this today even learning this is so important and that's when as as a woman sometimes I feel more of a parent than a lover and it I need to to switch it back but the thing is is it, it's kind of getting in the headspace of of changing I don't even know how to word it you probably understand what I mean um because yeah. you're a parent um mm -hmm. And I just, I just, so I, I find that I'm just going to have to make a conscientious effort, but I don't want it to be under obligation or anything. I want it to be its own, its own section, but I don't know how, I don't think I can split it up, but mm -hmm. the kids are older, like the one, like they're, they're adults. Right. But I find I'm trying not to get into the nagging parent kind of role. But I'm some days I'm just like, yes, yes, it's a process. What once our once our kids are young adults, you know, and the, and they're not under our moment by moment tutelage <laughs> and mm -hmm. and need um, to 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 create that which is me as an independent force of energy and life in and of myself, and when. When that, I'll be talking more about parenting. Is it next month or parenting life category? I think, um, but I'll be talking about this because it's really important. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a really quick little antidote. It's a much longer conversation, Yvonne, than we have time for today. But one thing that I can give you, because you're talking about parenting your kids, not parenting your partner. Oops, I was on mute. No, I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm oh, feeling like saying. that sometimes the partner needs to I don't 
feel like I have to say, oh, no, I'm going out. You can cook your own dinner or, you know what I mean? Like that's the, that's the issue is from his past trauma of a very yes, controlling, yes. of a very yes. controlling parent. I'm not willing to parent, but I feel like the only way to get something done is to parent and I'm not willing to do that. So that's when the resentment comes in. Right. And right, I know right. it's very easy as a mom, even though my kids are older, we know what being a parent is. So sometimes it's comfortable to flip ourselves back into the parenting role. But I know that's not where mm -hmm. I want to go because I feel resentment when I have to go there. And that, of course, affects every part of the relationship. Absolutely. It like, does. I'm not your right. mother and I'm not going to be your mother. Yeah. And then, so, and then so I wonder why really nothing gets done. Yeah, really quickly, Yvonne, because I, I want to be able to to complete on time, but I want to answer yeah. this. It's really important. Um, so the, the 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 two foundational pieces of this, and when I work in my workshop with couples, we address this because it's really important. There are two foundational things. You need to know what your non-negotiables are for yourself. What what's what's non-negotiable for you, what's negotiable, and what's a concession. Like, but yeah, whatever, I don't care. We can do that, whatever. This is negotiable. I, I really want it this way, but I'm willing to move a little bit on it. But this is a non-negotiable. When something is creating resentment, it's usually a non-negotiable. And so then there's a conversation that needs to be had first with yourself and then with your partner. This is non-negotiable, which means either we need to make an adjustment to accommodate it, or we need to have the really hard conversation that this isn't working. And what does that mean? separation, breakup, marriage counseling, what, you know, like this sounds like a non-negotiable to you because you cannot sustain that role, their parenting role energetically. It's creating resentment, which means it's building your negative ego, which is bringing ill health to your whole body, mind system. And it's not amplifying your love and your love making and your sexuality with your partner. So this would be uh, a topic that needs to be addressed you need to get very clear. Is this non-negotiable? Like, I am not going to parent you. You're an adult grown man. I am not your mother. I am your lover. I am your feminine counterpart. I want to come to you with love and sexuality and beauty and light you up. I do not want to micromanage your daily basic needs because you are not my dependent. You are an independent adult. Right. So if that is your non-negotiable, get really clear about that for yourself. And then you have to have a very clear communication with your husband about that. And um, I would recommend, honestly, book a session with me, either just you or the two of you as a couple. And let's work this through and or, you know, come come next month and just keep learning as I continue to offer. Um, but you want to address this because you cannot be his lover if you are being his mother. That doesn't mean you don't have nurturing qualities about you in your relationship. As women, we nurture very naturally, but you want to show up as his lover. And ultimately, he wants that too. So needs to be addressed, but really, really clearly, really clean. Thank you. That's a great question, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Let me read a few more of these. Um, 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 I think the biggest goal and also challenges to open up towards each other emotionally and spiritually. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, and the question always is how. What I wanted to present today was that how do you open up to each other? How do you open to yourself uh, emotionally and spiritually so that you can open to your lover also? Uh, emotionally and spiritually and uh, one needs a practice one needs a path all of the ancient traditions had practices and rituals and teachers or gurus or elders or medicine men and women to help guide um, so uh, yes yes to open to open to open uh, Michelle I don't have a relationship at present so I guess my biggest positive uh, and maybe negative challenge would be finding a relationship, absolutely. And uh, as you as you begin to open yourself um, through practice and redefine your energy through these practices, you're going to refine your energy, and it will redefine itself. 
and you will become more open to receiving that sacred relationship that that you desire that you want but that will also like i said earlier take you to the next step in in your path of self realization your path of enlightenment um Eddie, is it an idea to start them outside of sexual moments and bring them in later? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. My couples workshop, we don't get to the sex stuff until, you know, weeks in. We just start with simple practices, the breathing, the energy circuit, the alternate breath, these things. Practice them on your own. Get your vehicle pure and energized before you bring uh, these, these moments to your relationship. Um, because, because if you, if, if you're not embodying this universal pranic energy already to some degree, and you don't have to perfect it, you don't have to master it, but you have to have some comprehension, some experience of it. Then what will happen is you'll expect that the sex or the lovemaking or that your partner should give it to you or that you should be able to create it together. And it actually doesn't work like that. And this is a big challenge that couples face. They come thinking that their partner can fulfill something in them or give them something that they need or want to experience. We first cultivate it in ourselves, and we bring it to our relationship to amplify it. Not, not to get it, to amplify it. First, we need to get the universal life force flowing in the self. So yes, this is definitely something that you do um, prior uh, to sexual encounters. Yvonne, definitely non-negotiable. Good. I'm glad that you can identify. That's a big first step, Yvonne, to say that I know this about myself and I'm going to be true to myself. This is not negotiable any longer. That's a beautiful first step. And Michelle, this is stunningly beautiful yurt. Oh, thank you. I used to spend time in yurts uh, in Esalen. Wow. I can only imagine having such beautiful yurt at home. I know I'm so blessed. <laughs> I really am. This is where I get to come to work every day. It's really, really cool. Earlier, Michelle, I showed everybody. I'm going to show it again just because it's so beautiful. There's, there's the big central skylight through which the universal energy flows into the yurt. <laughs> So it's like, woo. and when you stand right underneath it, like the whole vocal, like it's, it resonates and echoes. It's all, it's really cool. Wow. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. I get excited about it too. All right. We have, we are just two minutes over. I'm just going to wrap up. I'm going to bring this all around with this conclusion that says sex is an extension of your creative life force amplified by your biology, your mind, and your emotions. All of these things work together. You've heard me talk about that in previous sessions. Sex is an extension of your creative life force, amplified by your biology, your mind, and your emotions. And if used as a sacred ritual, it will harness the atomic solar energies, the light, the power of the universe, and completely transform your health, your relationship, and your destiny. Yes, we can transform, we can change our destiny. I don't believe that destiny is set. Each choice that we make moment by moment unfolds a destiny. And so if you are in a place where you need to transform your health on any level or your relationship on any level, small or magnificent, or invite a relationship into your life, um, go, to the, go to the essence of that challenge or that problem, which is always going to be energy. And in this human body, it's always going to be based in your sexual energy because your sexual energy is your creative energy. It's through which you are creating your life and all the experience and relationships in your life moment by moment. And when I say sexual energy, I don't mean having sex. I mean the sexual energy, the creative energy, the life force that flows through us is sexual in nature. And so we must attend to it, purify it, amplify it, clear it, harmonize it, all of those things so that we can bring our energy uh, to a life that we just absolutely love, love living. Um, Q&A, we've done Q&A already. Uh, just a quick thought about the Way of Qigong uh, for Couples course and workshop for anyone who's interested. 
Tim said, uh, do you have a problem where you share knowledge, a platform uh, where you share knowledge insights? Look, I'm just going to share some of those things. Uh, Insta, YouTube or other, I sadly need to go. Thank you, Diana, for this amazing session. Yes, let me give, um, oh, where is it? Right here. Oh, oh, it went back. Okay, hold on, Tim. Are you still there? Or did he jump off already? Not sure. Let me escape from there. I want to get up for you a link, everyone, where you can simply um, request. Let me get to my chat. Thank you for your patience. If you click on that link, you can receive a free downloadable copy of those practices we did today, plus some other stuff in there. There's a making agreements, Yvonne, practice in here that you will really like that will happen with your non-negotiable. But it's also a place, this link, you can also choose to be on my email list or get in contact with me. Um, and you can also choose to um, get more information about the way of Qigong for couples. And, and let me bring that back up briefly for those of you who are still here with me. Thank you for staying a little bit long. Um, this in the fall, I've been teaching this for several years in person, and I'm going to move it uh, to an online course with a live Zoom um, weekly workshop for couples. If you want a deepen connection, if you want to strengthen communication, if you want to elevate your intimacy and vitalize the energy of your relationship, then this would be a great um, uh, course and workshop for you to join. If you want an intimate, trusting, secure, powerful partnership that's full of love, place, sex, support, and awakening, and ultimately leave an incredible legacy of love, this workshop would be for you. Um, so you can get more information on that link that I put into the chat um, I'll send you an email that has a link where you can just read more about it. And if you want, register. Um, and then finally, if you want to put a quick takeaway uh, into the chat and an action step. And my recommendation, of course, is to click on that link and at the very least, get the get the free PDF so that you have in written form much of what we've talked about today, plus a little bit more. It's an excerpt from my upcoming book. Um, and I would just love to share that with you. So um, these are all the things that you can do on that link. I just explained them. You can get on my email list. You can reserve my book. You can work with me privately. You can invite me uh, for an event podcast presentation, and you can learn more about the workshop. So um, let me just ask you all to unmute. And with that, um, we'll conclude our time together today. Michelle. That was so great. I'm sorry I'm late, but the part I was here was amazing. Wonderful, Michelle. I'll have a recording up and you can certainly go back and catch the beginning that you missed and fill in some of the spaces if I spoke something that you didn't understand because I touched on it earlier. I'm really glad you could be here with us today, Michelle. Thank you. Well, thank you for everything. Yvonne, you're welcome. Great to see your beautiful face again today. Uh, I've seen you obviously at previous sessions. It's great to have you here. Um, be in touch. Uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. my takeaway is hurry and find a husband so we can do your course. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Can I use that in my testimonials, Michelle? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That was like the big thing that came to my head. Like, well, you see, that is one of my part of my life with goals, but really I have some other pressing things that have to be, they're more important, but I, I do want to have a, you know, I do want to have that. So I just don't have the time to put into it right now, but who knows, maybe this is just one more little push. That's going to like, boom, just let it come to me without having to do the searching work. Yeah, I love it. Definitely. Sometimes sometimes the life needs to handle some things so that, you know, with my couples, I definitely talk a lot about, you know, you must be able to prioritize your relationship. That does not mean 24 seven. We also talk a lot about space and individuation, but um, you must be able to prioritize a relationship for a relationship to to be strong and to evolve. So it's great that you know that and you're not just 
you know, trying to get a partner because you have that desire um, and, and you don't have a lifestyle that can support it at the moment. But you'll get there, Michelle. I know the little bit that I know you, you're going to handle all of these other life pieces and you're going to invite a beautiful, powerful uh, partner into your life. Of that, I'm very sure. Um, oh, awesome. Well, we will love to do your course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will look forward to that. I really will. Uh, Jesus says, thank you, Diana. I will catch the recording because unfortunately I missed a lot. That's what the recording is there for, Jesus. I'm just, thank you for every month showing up to the degree that you can. And and yeah, go back and take a look. I would love for you to um, to review. Um, uh, Michelle, yes, thank you for sharing these beautiful teachings and time with us. It's so much my pleasure. I said early on, Michelle, that I'm just passionate about this topic. I love, of all the things I teach, I love teaching on this topic. So thank you all for being here and giving me that opportunity um, to, to share, to teach, to have my own vital life force lit up in me um, because you're here willing to receive it. So thank you for that. Uh, I love you all. And blessings until I see you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Sending you so much love. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.